Hey guys, it's Max from Max Tech. Today we're going to be comparing the iPhone 11 Pro Max against the brand new Google Pixel 4 XL. We're going to look at a wide variety of things such as the design, build quality, the displays, the speaker loudness and quality, performance, cameras, and much more. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform that makes it extremely easy to make an amazing website. Let's start off with build quality and design. I definitely prefer the look of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It looks more premium with the stainless steel frame that is more durable than the aluminum frame of the Pixel 4. The camera bump, in my opinion, looks much better than the Pixel 4s. And along with that, it just looks like it's nicer and more premium. But I like the feel of the Pixel 4 better. The matte glass is actually more satin-like somewhere between glossy and matte, whereas the iPhones is completely matte and it's a lot more slick. Now along with that, the frame of the Pixel 4 has a little bit more grip as well. It kind of has this textured feeling. And the actual phone itself is actually slimmer than the iPhone 11 Pro Max, making it feel more comfortable in the hand. Flipping over to the side, the Pixel 4 has all of its buttons on the right-hand side. We have the power button and the volume rocker, and I actually prefer this because I can control everything with my thumb and it's perfect since I'm right-handed. Whereas the iPhone has a larger power button on the side, which is definitely nicer to have it be larger than the small one. And then your volume rocker is on the left side and included with that, we have this physical silent switch, which I really like and I wish the Pixel offered. Now, along with that, the quality of the buttons are much better on the iPhone. They feel like they're more clicky, more consistent, where the Pixel buttons feel kind of mushy. We also have some major differences on the front. The iPhone has that notch that a lot of people don't like, but the Pixel 4 goes for a different method altogether, skipping the notch, but giving us this very big forehead that houses all the new sensors. The Pixel 4 does have slimmer bezels on the side, but the chin is also larger at the bottom, and it no longer has that front-facing speaker. Of course, the iPhone has a lightning port instead of USB Type-C, and neither of these phones have a headphone jack, but the iPhone does give you lightning ear pods inside of the box, where the Pixel doesn't give you any headphones. As for battery capacity, the Pixel 4 has a 3700 milliamp hour battery compared to 3969 in the iPhone. Now you would expect that the battery life would be quite similar with battery sizes so close, but in fact we have a massive difference. The Pixel 4 gets roughly five to five and a half hours of screen on time, just the way it's set up out of the box, compared to eight to eight and a half with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. That is a huge difference. So both these phones have a bunch of sensors in the foreheads or inside the notch here that allows the phone to accurately and securely unlock your phone. The iPhone has had that for a while, and you just look at it, it shows unlock, and you have to swipe to get to your home screen. Whereas with the Pixel 4, it will actually do it automatically for you, as you guys can see. It is very fast and very convenient. And I love the fact that the Pixel 4 gives you this option. I really wish Apple would let us have that as well. Now, one other difference is that the Pixel 4 has their solely radar sensor built in. The benefit of the radar for face unlock is that as soon as you reach for your phone, it will actually know that you're reaching for it, and it will turn on all of the sensors and that speeds up the face unlocking process. Let's compare the speed of the face unlock. So right now the Pixel isn't unlocking automatically and I'm just gonna press on the button as I type and swipe on the iPhone. And as you guys could tell, it definitely is a lot faster. And most of the time you don't even have to do anything. As soon as you pick it up, it's unlocked, maybe. <laughs> so one interesting thing with this radar sensor is that it is not always uh, working properly. Maybe it just needs more software optimization. But one feature that allows you to do is skip songs and do different gestures. But what I found in the real world is that a lot of the times the gestures aren't properly recognized. The iPhone does have better range with its face unlock sensors. I set both on the desk in front of me. And if I press down on the iPhone, as you guys could see, it did unlock. But the Pixel, if I press down, all we get is a little shaking lock icon, meaning it can't recognize my face. Let me give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. I've built many websites using Squarespace and have been recommending them for over five years now. And I've tried making websites from scratch, using custom templates and different platforms, and Squarespace is by far my most recommended method. 
Whether you want to build a portfolio site, e-commerce, blog, or anything else, they have got you covered with great cross-platform designs to choose from and built-in security certificates and SEO tools. This means that your website will rank much better in searches, and that's all included for one low price, meaning that Squarespace is not only easy to use and fantastic looking, but in amazing value as well. Head to squarespace.com slash maxtech for a no credit card required trial and to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now let's compare the displays. The Pixel 4 has a higher resolution that means more pixels per inch and also has a slightly smaller screen, 6.3 inches compared to 6.5. Now in the real world, if I take a close look at the icons or even if I open up a web page, it is very difficult to see the difference because the iPhone is a retina display, meaning it's already high enough resolution uh, to not be able to tell a difference. Now both of them do have uh, a white balance adjustment automatically, ambient EQ for the Pixel 4 or True Tone for the iPhone. That means that the white balance will change depending on your lighting and that is very nice to have. Now let's talk about display brightness. I matched these up identically and what's very interesting is the difference in the actual brightness setting. The iPhone 11 Pro Max is actually less than 50% brightness, whereas the Pixel 4 is probably around the 80% mark. That means we're pushing more power to this display here, and it probably is draining more battery. Now, if we go ahead and max both of these out, now I do have auto brightness turned off, we could tell that the iPhone is way brighter. You can really tell the difference here when we adjust our camera's exposure so they're not blowing out the screens. This is the biggest disappointment about the Pixel 4 for me personally, not the lack of ultra wide lens or battery life, the fact that when you're outside, it is very difficult to see the screen and there's a lot of reflections. Because of this, I pretty much always have to have the Pixel 4's display completely maxed out compared to having the iPhones at around 70%, which also leads to worse battery life for the Pixel. The Pixel 4 does have one trick up its sleeve and that is the 90 hertz refresh rate of the display. This means that when it is working, everything is super smooth and of course paired with these faster animations, it looks really nice and pleasant to use. Now one issue that it is having is that the 90 hertz is actually not working the majority of the time. It cuts down to 60 hertz to save battery life. So when it is on, it is nice and you notice it, but when it's off, there is no difference. Now Google did say that they're gonna put out a patch to allow the 90 hertz screen to work more often, but of course that is gonna further impact battery life. Because of this, when watching videos, the iPhone has better brightness and contrast at the same time, which definitely beats out the slightly sharper image of the Pixel 4 screen. Now let's compare the speakers. Keep in mind that what you're hearing is going through a microphone, a recorder, through compression, and depending on your speakers, you won't hear the same thing that we're hearing. But based on what we can hear, uh, the Pixel 4 has a lot more mids. They're really pushing the volume of the mids, but not so much the highs or the lows, whereas the iPhone sounds more balanced, but quieter. Vocals are a lot more clear, and overall, the actual balance of the sound is better in terms of speakers. The Pixel 4 gives a lot of volume out of the earpiece speaker, and kind of overpowers the bottom one, which is a first for us. You could definitely tell that's not blended in together as well. The iPhone made a big jump with the 11 Pro over the 10s to have everything sound perfectly balanced, which makes it a better phone for a surround sound. But as far as output, the Pixel 4 is a little bit louder. Now let's get into performance. The Pixel 4 has a Snapdragon 855, which is getting close to a year old now, whereas the iPhone uses the new A13 Bionic, has four gigs of RAM compared to six gigs of RAM, but of course iOS is a little bit more efficient with its RAM management. And running Geekbench 5, we get a pretty big difference in performance. As far as single core, uh, the iPhone is more than double the performance. And in multi-core, the iPhone is more than 40% faster. Now in the real world, you can't really tell a difference when you're opening apps or scrolling. Both of them do a great job, but that's gonna come in as far as future-proofing. And along with that, the iPhone doesn't have to work as hard to do regular tasks 
which will help as far as battery life. Now, as far as graphics, we would typically run Antutu, but it just got updated for Android and not iOS. But looking back at our last test using the Note 10, which has the same graphics as the Pixel 4, the iPhone was 42% more powerful. Now, if we look at Geekbench 5's compute test, which tests a variety of different graphics tasks, the iPhone is more than three times faster. Now, this test does use Apple's own Metal API along with Apple's graphics compared to Vulkan with Android. And this just shows off the efficiency of having dedicated hardware and software working together. Now, let's talk about the cameras. Google added a telephoto lens to the Pixel 4, so now it has two lenses compared to three with the iPhone, which includes an ultra wide lens. Now, the iPhone is definitely a big powerhouse in terms of video. It could shoot 4K 60 on all of the cameras, all the lenses, including the front facing one, where the Pixel can't shoot 4K 60 at all, and it can't shoot 4K on the front facing even at 30 frames per second. Now, the Pixel does have one standout feature that is astro mode or astrophotography, which really makes images look great if you're shooting at night and you have a tripod. Now, we do have a full comparison between the Pixel 4 and the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and along with that, the Note 10 is in terms of photos. So if you guys wanna see a very good detailed comparison, we will have that linked at the end of this video. The last few differences in terms of hardware is that the iPhone has Wi-Fi 6, which the Pixel 4 does not have, and the iPhone has better waterproofing up to 13 feet for 30 minutes compared to three feet. Now getting into the price, uh, both these start with 64 gigabytes of RAM. The Pixel 4 XL comes in at $900 compared to $1,100 for the iPhone. Now if you want more storage than that, the Pixel 4 can go up to 128 gigabytes for another $100, where the iPhone you need to spend 150, but you end up getting 256 gigabytes of storage. Apple also gives you the choice to get up to 512 gigabytes of storage, where with the Pixel, you're limited at 128 and you cannot add any extra because there is no SD card slot. Now, what is our final verdict? Well, if the operating system doesn't matter to you, we think that the iPhone 11 Pro Max is definitely worth the extra cost. In terms of hardware, it is better in almost every single way. As far as photos, it beats it out in most ways, and video is also a lot better. The screen is viewable outside, and the difference in battery life is substantial, making it the all-around better phone. Now, if you are somebody that's been using iPhones for a while, and say you're using an older iPhone, maybe all the way up to an iPhone 10 and you know that you want to switch to Android, the Pixel 4 will give you the closest experience uh, with Android to using iOS. We have the face unlock, we have the new gestures just like iOS has with the new iPhones. Um, the look and design and feel is kind of similar to an iPhone as well. The software is simple, it works pretty well. So if that's where you're coming from, uh, the Pixel 4 will give you a better, closer experience compared to one of the other flagships that we think offer more bank for the buck, like the Note 10 Plus or the OnePlus 7 Pro. Go ahead and give us your opinions down in the comment section below. I wanna hear your guys' thoughts. If you guys wanna subscribe, click that little circle above and enable notifications down below and check out our photo and video comparisons against these two that are super detailed right over there. This has been Max with Max Tech and I'll see you in the next video.